Okay, hello everybody. Um, my name is Joel Jones from the PUCP in Lima, Peru, and I'll be today's host of this uh, webinar in the Latin American Webinars uh, of Physics. Uh, today we have a very interesting talk about neutron and antineutron oscillations in supersymmetry. But before we begin, let me remind you that you can ask questions via the Q&A uh, in Google+. These questions will be answered at the end of the, the talk. Or you can use a hashtag to ask us questions in, on Twitter. The hashtag is this one. This one. La WAP. OK? So uh, that's, that's that. Uh, remember also that if you miss any live transmissions, you can watch uh, the transmission later in our YouTube channel. Uh, let me tell you also that we have a WordPress page uh, where we also centralize all the information. I think you can see it right there. OK. It's, it's not very difficult to remember, right? Law physics, WordPress. Um, so OK, let's, let's, get to, let's get to business. Uh, the speaker is Lorenzo Calibi, and he's currently a senior research associate in the Institute of Theoretical Physics at the Chinese Academy of Science in Beijing, China. So he, he's practically giving this webinar close to midnight. So I guess we should be very grateful for Lorenzo uh, to give this talk, right? Um, so Lorenzo received his PhD from the University of Padova and has carried out postdocs at CISA at the Max Planck Institute and the Université Libre of, Br of Brussels, right? And the title of his talk is Neutron and Neutron Oscillations as a Probe of Supersymmetry Beyond the LHC. So let me present Lorenzo. Uh, let's see, present to everyone. Here we go. We're all yours, Lorenzo. Hi. Hi to everybody. Thanks, Joel, for the presentation. And yeah, thanks for inviting me to give this seminar. So I think now I should just share my screen somehow and show show you my slides. Can you see it? Everything good, everything good. OK. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to present a recent work that I've done in collaboration with these friends uh, who are both uh, theorists and experimentalists from the University of Gothenburg and uh, Stockholm in Sweden. So as Joel anticipated, the topic is neutron and neutron anti-neutron oscillations. So why to study such uh, such process? So of course this is a process that violates uh, the baryon number by two units, um, and we know that baryon number uh, is uh, just an accidental symmetry. Uh, of the standard model of particle physics. Um, basically, the Lagrangian of the standard model is invariant under baryon number uh, just because you cannot write any baryon number violating operator respecting all the other symmetries. Uh, nevertheless, it is actually uh, violated. It's broken by non-perturbative effects. But this gives... Uh, uh, very tiny uh, uh, possible visible effects. So in a sense, if we observe any process uh, violating the baryon number, it's a clean signal of new physics. So this is the first reason why uh, we might be interested in looking like processes of neutron to anti-neutron oscillations. Furthermore, um, we know that Baryon number violation is one of the requirements for uh, having uh, a successful baryogenesis so to produce uh, uh, the, the, the baryon asymmetry in the early universe that, uh, than we observe today. Um, so we expect that uh, any extension of the standard model of particle physics will 
uh, will give uh, substantial uh, baryon number violation for this reason. The uh, first process that we can uh, think of uh, as baryon number uh, violating process is, of course, proton decay. Uh, as we know, this has been searched for since many years, and present constraints are uh, already very stringent on uh, the lifetime uh, of the proton. And this process uh, is, of course, uh, requires the violation of bio number by one unit, uh, but also uh, violation of the lepton number, simply because for uh, um, conservation of spin, basically, uh, a proton cannot decay to uh, anything else than, than a lepton. So, uh, so if instead we have a theory that gives substantial value number violation, but no lepton number violation, uh, the only new effects uh, we can observe uh, arise at the level of delta B equal to. So, uh, violation of the baryon number by two units. Um, and processes of these kinds are precisely neutron and trineutron oscillation. And we, as we will see later, uh, possibly also uh, dinucleon decay. So, the, the decay of uh, uh, two nucleon particles inside uh, nuclei. Um, <clears throat> the main motivation uh, for, for studying uh, uh, these processes or for reviving this process that uh, was, has been studied, uh, studied quite extensively in the past, but uh, not so much lately in recent years, um, is radar experimental. So that was our starting point. Uh, why? So. Uh, the present limit on uh, um, neutron anti neutron oscillation uh, using free neutrons uh, is this one. It's a limit on the uh, oscillation time uh, uh, of the order of, as you can see, 10 to the 8 seconds. And it was established already more than 20 years ago by this experiment in uh, Grenoble in France. And this is a sketch of what was the uh, experimental setup. Uh, more recently, uh, Super Kamiokande in Japan uh, established an indirect limit uh, based on the, uh, on the, on the observation of, uh, so based on the, of the fact that as you know, they, they, they have a, uh, a big tank with a lot of water, so this means a lot of oxygen, so they can uh, set uh, a constraint on the, uh, on the oscillation of neutron bounded uh, within uh, uh, oxygen nucleus. Then, relying on some uh, um, nuclear physics, uh, you can translate this this bound, that, as you can see, is very, very uh, stringent in terms of uh, uh, lifetime, but the processes, uh, as we will see in a, in a minute, uh, are very different if uh, the neutron is a, is a free state or it's bounded in the nuclei. It can be translated to a bound on the uh, oscillation time uh, as a, of the free neutron. Uh, of the same order of magnitude of the Grenoble experiment, uh, slightly more stringent. Uh, of course, this translation uh, involves uh, some, uh, uh, some nuclear physics uncertainties, uh, but it should be pretty, pretty robust. Um, so our motivation was that uh, there is a new uh, facility under construction in, uh, in Lund, in Sweden. It's a European project. It's called the European Spallation Source. Uh, it's a multi-purpose neutron source that will be made for uh, 
Um, but it's also proposed that a lot of ideas stores of intense neutron beams uh, to um, uh, for for to, to 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 for new experiments of on neutron to anti neutron oscillations. So this is also why uh, my collaborators in this project were all uh, people working in Sweden, by the way. And so uh, this project has not been in some and the aim at the decision on the probability by three orders of magnitude. So a quite a remarkable improvement, which translated in the in the in a limit on the oscillation time will be a factor of thirty or so. So this is a sketch of the proposed experimental setup. Uh, here you have the, the neutron source, then the neutrons uh, are guided within a, a, a pipe, a vacuum of course, um, and they, they are let fly for about 100 meters. There is a magnetic shielding, as we will see in a second, this is uh, uh, an important requirement for this experimental setup. And finally, so we can uh, we can we can detect this and this process. A very simple equation, so this kind of uh, Hamiltonian matrix is very familiar, uh, for instance, to those uh, who work in neutrino physics. Um, here we have the the, 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 the the energy of the neutron, the energy of the uh, uh, anti-neutron, and some mixing terms. Of course, this mixing is uh, an interaction that uh, violates uh, the, the baryon number, and it is required to 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 induce our process. So from this, uh, we can calculate very similarly to again to neutrino oscillation. The, uh, the probability that uh, uh, a neutron after uh, a time of flight t uh, oscillate to an anti-neutron. So as you can see, this probability gets uh, suppressed by uh, this delta E, which is the, uh, the, the energy difference of the of the neutron and anti-neutron uh, states. Uh, so this is the reason why this experimental setup requires a magnetic shielding, shielding because uh, the, uh, the, 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 um, the energy difference given by, uh, by the, the, the Earth's uh, magnetic field would be enough to uh, to decrease, to suppress this transition probability uh, to unobservable levels. And by the way, this is also the reason why <coughs> in, the, in nuclei, where of course a neutron and, uh, and an anti-neutron feels uh, very uh, different potentials, uh, the transition probability is so low that an experiment like Super Kamiokande uh, can set, I mean, even if it can set such a uh, huge uh, bound, then this just translates to uh, 10 to the 8 seconds in terms of uh, free neutron uh, oscillations. So how can it be induced a mixing between a neutron and anti-neutron? Of course, we can just uh, work in a, a low energy, effective theory, 
uh, writing effective operators that that can give rise to 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 this kind of mixing. Uh, the simplest are of this kind. So you see, these are six uh, six quarks uh, effective operators, uh, possibly of different chiralities. So this means that these are at least uh, dimension nine operators. There is a full basis of operators. If you write it in an SU2 invariant way, uh, you will see that there are possibly uh, 14 combinations of um, six quarks operators uh, up to mass dimension 14. Because, of course, for SU2 invariants, some of these operators require insertions of Higgs field. Um, what can be the underlying new physics, so the UV completion uh, giving rise to uh, operators of these kinds at low energy? In this work, uh, in order to have a, a definitive, a definite uh, renormalizable setup and to compare basically the discovery potential of these new proposed experiments with the uh, other kind of experiments, for instance, uh, high energy collisions, DLAC. Uh, we worked in a very well established concept, namely supersymmetry with a R parity violation. Um, R parity violation, of course, is required because uh, the supersymmetric Lagrangian would be baryon number conserving uh, if R parity were uh, exactly. Uh, conserved. Um, so we did the simplest possible choice. So we extended the, the minimum supersymmetric standard model just with one set of operators, those precisely that violate our parity and uh, the baryon number. So you can see here we have three uh, quark superfields. Uh, that then translates in, in the Lagrangian in interaction uh, interactions between uh, a, a scalar quark, a quark, uh, with two ordinary quarks. Um, if we write only this new term in the in the superpotential, uh, we we have no lepton number uh, violation at least at the perturbative level. So this means that, as I was mentioning before, uh, no proton decay can be used. Um, but this term violates the baryon number by one unit. Uh, so uh, we already see from here that we will require this kind of interaction twice in order to induce a two units of baryon number violation. And Given this tensor structure, this, these are SU3 indices. So this is an SU3 contraction in order to have an SU3 uh, singlet. This is a totally antisymmetric tensor. Um, we can see that um, these terms uh, do, do not vanish only if these two fields are different, namely if the uh, flavor indices of these two quarks of quarks uh, are not the same. Uh, in other words, um, these uh, the terms uh, inducing baryon number violation uh, we require uh, flavor uh, mixing, flavor violation too. So. Again, this is our model, and um, as I was mentioning, um, flavor violation will be required uh, in order to, 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 to generate uh, uh, an n bar oscillation. So a uh, first constraint that we will have to take into account comes from flavor physics. So ray of flavor and CP violating processes induced by uh, by supersymmetric particles in the loop, for instance, uh, in a 
meson oscillation, KK bar mixing, BB bar mixing. This will be a first constraint. Second set of constraints will, will be given by other processes that violate uh, barrier number, uh, namely uh, dinucleon decays. Uh, so two protons or two, two neutrons in, in the nuclei decaying, for instance, two counts or two pions. Uh, this kind of, uh, of processes have been searched again uh, from uh, by Super um, and observing uh, uh, possible decays, of course, of uh, oxygen nuclei, uh, and they can be translated in lifetime of protons or neutrons, uh, diprotons or dineutrons again of the order of 10 to the 32 years. So these processes can set uh, relevant constraints on the parameter space. And then, of course, we are dealing with a, a supersymmetric uh, setup. So we have these uh, new supersymmetric particles, squarks, uh, gluinos. Um, so we will have to take into account uh, uh, constraints coming from direct searches for the production of these new particles uh, at the LAC. Uh, but we are in a R parity violating setup. So um, as you know, uh, the lattice supersymmetric particle is not stable anymore, um, which means that uh, we, we are not going to deal with the more canonical uh, SUSY signature based on a, a large amount of missing energy at collider. Uh, so the collider phenomenology will be uh, quite different, as we will see in this slide. So we have squarks and gluinos. Uh, they can both now decay to ordinary quarks. So this means that at the LSE, they just will uh, give rise to uh, jets. Um, for instance, uh, this scalar quark, this quark, can simply decay to two quarks, given our uh, apparity violating interaction lambda double prime, and this is a very simple expression for the decay width. Um, and in this figure, I'm showing the uh, uh, the squark lifetime, so um, the squark decay lens, uh, rather, uh, as a function of this uh, 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 barrier number violating uh, coupling. So here we have 10 to the minus 5, and I'm taking lower and lower values down to 10 to the minus 10. So, um, Depending on the decay lens, so how fast is the decay of this of this particle, we can have different regime, different uh, phenomenology uh, uh, within a, a, an LAC detector. So if the um, um, the interaction is strong enough, namely uh, above 10 to the minus six or more for this new Yukawa coupling. Uh, the, the squark will just decay promptly, so uh, the, the, the two jets will uh, appear as coming from the interaction point. Uh, well, if you if we lower this this coupling, uh, the, the the squark gets more and more long lived, and uh, gives rise uh, more likely to uh, displaced vertices. Namely, it travels through the detector for a while, through the tracker, uh, and then decays. So, in, so the two jets uh, points to a, a, a displaced vertex, a vertex which is uh, at a finite distance from the primary interaction vertex. If you lower more and more uh, the, the, the coupling, Eventually, these these objects uh, will result as stable on the on the detector uh, time scale, um, 
which means that it would look like what people call our hadrons. So it's a, a relatively long-lived, uh, strongly interacting particle which will uh, hadronize. We will form bound state with uh, ordinary quarks. So it will look like a, a, a heavy uh, colored object. Uh, hitting uh, the material of the detector at any place and eventually uh, leaving the detector. So uh, for the three of this kind of regime, there are of course dedicated searches at LAC experiments. Uh, so these are very different uh, possible phenomenologies. Um, the same we can say about the, the gluinos. Uh, if the gluinos are the, 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 the lighter than the squarks, they can still uh, decay to, uh, to quark uh, through this, uh, with the mediation of an of a off-shell squark with a real plus quark. So this is just an ordinary SU3 interaction and this is our apparently violating coupling. Um, so this is a three-body decay. Um, and so it's further suppressed by phase space. Uh, so this is the reason why, uh, on average, gluinos tend to be, if lighter than scores, tend to be more long-lived. Here, if you can, can see, I start plotting from 10 to the minus 2. Um, so the, the, the lifetime d depends also on, on the ratio between squark and, and gluino mass. But as you can see, uh, below, say, 10 to the minus 4, uh, the gluino tends always to be long-lived enough to, to give rise to uh, displaced vertices. Uh, so only for very large or parity violating coupling, we will have... Uh, uh, prompt, uh, prompt decays. Um, and in general, even if these, the gluinos are heavier than, than the squarks, uh, they, they will still decay through this, through, through this diagram, this time much more efficiently, this decay will be uh, on shell. So you can see that pair producing two gluinos will give rise to events with six jets. So we can expect a, a substantial, I mean, a, a quite high uh, jet activity in the, in the, in the signals for, for, for this kind of parity violating setup. So to summarize, what we expect at the LEC are to constrain this kind of, of, of models. Uh, is absence of missing ET and uh, uh, either uh, events featuring many jets or uh, long-lived uh, hadrons or displaced vertices. So we have to uh, look for the uh, appropriate analysis uh, performed by ATLAS and CMS uh, in order to to, 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 to to set the constraints uh, of the LSC on our parameter space, we had basically to recast the bounds uh, given by the two experimental collaboration on our other, so long-lived uh, colored uh, superparticles, um, displaced vertices, so this, we employed the uh, recasting done by these two gentlemen uh, in 2015, where you can see for uh, certain ranges of the, of the, in this case, Gluino to 3Jet lifetime, uh, a CMS analysis can set already constraints which are quite strong, uh, the order of 1.4 TV. Uh, 
And then in case our objects uh, decay fast enough to give rise to um, prompt jets, uh, we uh, had to employ multi-jets searches from Atlas. Uh, and we also uh, used the constraints by CMS on die-jet production, uh, namely to, to constrain the, uh, the, 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 the squawk per production. Um, in this case, this can give a, a bound on the squawk mass of the order of 300 GV or so. OK, so let's come back to our NN-bar oscillation process. Uh, as an example, I will just consider this diagram that was uh, for the first time proposed by SVNL already long ago, as you can see. Um, so this gives rise to our six quarks uh, operator. As you can see, in this case, all uh, right-handed uh, quarks. Um, and third thing that we observe is here we have <coughs> our, uh, our parity violating coupling. So this <coughs> here, this is the, the, the two vertices that violate baryon number. Uh, and as I was mentioning, we, in order uh, to uh, to, to this coupling to be no, non-vanishing, we, we, we require a flavor changing. So uh, the score here must be either second or third generation. So a strange or bottom score. Um, this means that since we have to go back to the first generation, uh, because in our operator, of course, we require only first generation quarks, uh, we also require uh, flavor mixing. So uh, the, a mixing between second or third generation quark uh, with the first generation quark. Um, so, uh, and here we, we just exchange a gluino. So these are just SU3. Uh, uh, gauge interactions. So in the end, we can integrate out the supersymmetric particles, which are, of course, much heavier than the energy scale of our process. We obtain this operator, and the coefficient uh, of this operator can be written like this in terms of our high energy parameters. Uh, again, we can see two times the baryon number violating coupling, two times this parameter that parameterizes the, 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 the flavor, the squark flavor violation, uh, the suppression given by the supersymmetric masses, blue in and squark masses, and SU3 interaction. Uh, and then we can simply use this coefficient to estimate the oscillation time, uh, which just results uh, just given by this expression. So 1 over the, the, the value of this coefficient times uh, an adronic four factor, uh, which is uh, our main uh, source of uncertainty in this business. So we know that this uh, number has to be uh, of the order of the sum powers of the QCD scale, uh, but there are no uh, uh, definite prediction for this, not even from lattice QCD. Um, so let me plug in some numbers. In order to get uh, a value for the oscillation time uh, of the order of the, of the present bound. Uh, we need, as you can see, a supersymmetric particle of the order of 1 TV, 500 GV for the squarks. Uh, rather small uh, uh, baryon number violating couplings are sufficient. Uh, I'm taking this value for uh, uh, flavor violation. And as I was mentioning, 
I'm taking the uh, hadronic four factor uh, of the order of, uh, for dimensional reasons, six powers of the uh, QCD scale. <coughs> As I was mentioning before, we have other constraints to take into account, which comes precisely from this the flavor violation and again the baryon number violation. So flavor changing neutral currents, so we can write diagrams like this, so a box diagrams that gives right to KK bar and BB bar mixing. Um, of course, if this uh, uh, flavor violating parameters are complex, uh, this can give rise also to CP violation in KK bar mixing. Um, and the dinoclon decays. So if we have this lambda double prime UDS, we can write a diagram like this uh, that allow uh, decay of uh, two neutrons or two protons, two, two kaons. Um, in case we, we, we employ the, uh, uh, the coupling involving the third generation, the, the, the bottom, uh, just for a kinematical reason, uh, the, the nucleons cannot decay to, to, to B mesons. Uh, but of course, we know we have, uh, for NM bar oscillation, we need flavor mixing. So uh, we can employ the flavor mixing to uh, write a diagram like this that uh, gives rise to uh, decay of the dinucleon to pions. So our uh, approach was uh, defining some simplified models. So rather than uh, uh, having a, a, a definite top-down uh, top uh, SUSI breaking uh, scenario, we just worked with uh, uh, simplified model uh, at low energy uh, defined only by the supersymmetric particles and interactions uh, we need in this diagram. Um, so we could compare in pretty straightforward way uh, the strengths of all these uh, different uh, experimental informations. Uh, all the, the, the impact of all of them on our parameter space. And our goal was basically uh, highlighting the complementarity of our neutron oscillation experiment and the direct LEC searches. So let me show you some colorful plots. Um, here I'm employing uh, uh, in this left panel the, 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 the uh, the, 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 the coupling involving the second generation, here the, the third generation. I'm setting uh, this value, this intermediate value, 10 to the minus 6. Uh, it's a Yukawa coupling, so in, in a sense, uh, we can expect some Yukawa couplings to be small if you think of the uh, you have a coupling of the electron, for instance, which is more or less of this order of magnitude. And then here we, we just show uh, the, the plane of the squirk and the gluinum axis. So first of all, our NN bar present, NN bar constraint is given by this blue line. Um, and the expected uh, increase of the sensitivity of the uh, proposed NM bar experiments uh, should uh, test this region uh, up to this dashed uh, blue line. But of course, we have other constraints. The strongest in this case is the comes from dinucleon decays, uh, which seems to be. Uh, more or less of the same order of the um, of the proposed increase of the sensitivity in NM bar, um, 
but we have to take into account that, as I was mentioning, both processes are affected by uh, strong uh, uh, adronic uncertainties. Uh, so here I'm just plotting the central value, but you should rather think at these curves like bands, uh, which overlap and can span uh, uh, a little bit of this parameter space if you vary uh, this uh, adronic four factor by an order of magnitude. So since we don't know much about its actual numerical value. Then we have these colored red regions, which uh, <clears throat> show the constraints, the direct constraints from the LEC uh, on the parameter space. These green ones, uh, which are in this part of the, of the plane, where the, uh, the squarks are, are lighter than the gluinos, come from uh, uh, prompt decays. So basically, you pair produce squarks, or you pair produce gluinos, and you obtain uh, bounds from dijet and multijet searches. Dark green is multijet, and this green one, which does not depend on the gluino masses from direct squark production and, uh, and bounds on, on dijet. Uh, well, on this part, uh, of, of the plane, uh, well, the, 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 the gluinos are, are the lightest uh, particles you can, you can produce in a, uh, in a strong uh, interaction on the LEC. Um, the, the, the particles tend to be lo longer lived, uh, so the, 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 the main bounds are given by the searches for di displaced jets this yellow region here, That's, as you can see, is pretty strong. Uh, goes up to 1.4 TV for the uh, gluino mass. And then if you have a maximum CP violation uh, in a cake bar mixing, uh, that all the region below this red line is excluded by epsilon K, so by CP violation in cake bar. Uh, of course, you can reduce this uh, this, uh, this constraint uh, if you assume that the, the phase is uh, somehow suppressed. Um, well, on the other hand, the, 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 the flavor constraints is not so strong in the B sector. So in, in case of you have this interaction, the, uh, the, the constraint from flavor comes from uh, uh, BB bar mixing, so which constrain only this region. Uh, so you see that you have your parameter spaces uh, much less constrained, you have much more room for uh, uh, improvement, in a sense, uh, from N, N and bar alone. And also the dinucleon decay is less constraining because in this case the, the, the dinucleon cannot decay directly to chaos, but they decay to pion through uh, flavor violation. So you have a, a further suppression uh, of the process. So you can see here, you have, a, uh, of course, for this setup, the parameters you have a quite promising situation, but already the NN bar constraint is pretty strong, tend to be stronger than the constraints set by the LAC, at least on the squirt mass, already at the level of one TV. And the future uh, constraint can be up to, uh, go up to two TV or so, which is a value which is uh, maybe even beyond the reach of the LAC itself. Um, on the other hand, if we take this uh, our parity violating coupling and we, we, we lower it, in this case by two order of magnitude, uh, the situation is reversed. All our low energy processes are not sensitive anymore, so the, 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 the constraints are not, uh, are irrelevant, uh, while LAC uh, gives the, the, the strongest constraint. Um, in this case, also, uh, the scores are always long lived, tends to be, cannot decay prompt because uh, the coupling is too small, the decay uh, is too slow. Uh, so also in this case, in this case, we have also a constraint from displaced vertices on score, which gives a bound about one TV. 
and one of the strongest constraints on supersymmetric particles uh, so far. So a constraint on long-lived uh, gluinos, which is more than 1.5 TV on this part of the play. So as you can see, I mean, here we have really an interplay between uh, this kind of low energy uh, test of this kind of models and the high energy test at BLC. Depending on the regime of these parameters, we can better probe this parameter space with a NM bar oscillation or directly with the LSC. So as usual, it's important to, uh, to have both uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, experiments to, 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 to set uh, complementary uh, constraints. Uh, here we can see the same thing. Here I'm simply plotting the, the, the coupling uh, versus uh, the squirt mass. So when the coupling is low, this uh, LAC constraint dominate, uh, while if you raise uh, this uh, barrier number violated coupling, of course, then <coughs> uh, barrier number violating observables give the dominant constraints, and as you can see, they, they can really uh, already exclude uh, up to uh, 2 TV or so the, 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 the our uh, uh, squirt masses. And if we go to an extreme case, if we take even order one couplings for the, uh, for the binary number violation and order one uh, flavor violation, uh, the situation becomes like this. This is now TV. So <laughs> this shows basically uh, the potential of, of this kind of experiments of testing uh, uh, three-level uh, new physics that gives rise to an bar oscillation with large couplings. So in principle, you see, we can already exclude scales which are of the order of hundreds of TV. Uh, and you can have a substantial improvement by the observed experiments, up to 1,000 TV or so. So here I'm plotting the same thing, this time just setting the, 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 the barrier number violating coupling to one, uh, and plotting the, the, the oscillation lifetime as a function of the squirt mass. Um, and here you see the present bounds and the projector sensitivity. Uh, while well, these bands give the uh, give you the feeling of this unfamous hadronic uncertainties uh, I was uh, mentioning before, but you can see anyway there is a lot of room for improvement uh, for this uh, new experiment. So, in principle, we can really even uh, go up to again 1,000 TV in uh, in testing uh, and this this kind of uh, this kind of models. Okay, so I think I'm running out of time, so let me just mention here very quickly that this was just one possible way of uh, giving rise to NM bar oscillations. If you have a look at the paper, we collected uh, uh, several more diagrams that do the job. Um, this is an example of uh, a, a loop-induced uh, NN bar oscillation, which uh, requires electroweak interactions instead of uh, strongly interacting uh, uh, supersymmetric particles as before. So here you have further loop suppression, but you flavor violation is or is. Uh, uh, is automatically given by this uh, vertices by the ordinary CKM matrix. So in this case, uh, you don't have to assume anything. Uh, you don't have to 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 to, to assume a source of uh, uh, flavor violation beyond the, the one that it's already present in the in the um, in the standard model. Uh, but the effect is much smaller, so in terms of, uh, but also the bounds are much weaker from the LAC. So here <coughs> I'm showing uh, the, 
the, the, the present constraint from n and bar and the possible improvement by the proposed experiments. Uh, anyway, also here we can test uh, squark masses up to order 2 keV if the coupling is large. Okay, this brings me to my conclusions. Um, so I just show you that this future uh, neutron anti neutron experiment proposed that the ESS um, has indeed the, the, the capability of, of probe a number of by number violation beyond the present constraints. So we, we worked in a specific setup where, as you can see, different information from different uh, physical processes are required to assess the sensitivity of experiments. We have on one side uh, uh, flavor uh, constraints, on the other side LSE constraints, uh, dinucleon decays. So, but even if you consider um, all these bounds, still, I show you that at least for certain setups of the parameter, you can indeed uh, uh, test the 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 the, the, uh, the, 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 the models uh, beyond the the, the, the present bounds. So even if you like, discover something, uh, and in our Example, I mean, what is remarkable is that squarks and gluinos in the multi-TV range, in principle, can be tested. So this is beyond what we can do at Collider, at least uh, at the LEC. Uh, and if you are in a crazy situation like that, of course, you can even test physics, which is really beyond the reach of any Collider we can dream of. Okay, I stop here. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Lorenzo. Let's get back. Uh, stop presenting. Okay, so okay. it's uh, it's time for for questions, I guess. Um, let's see. Let me remind everybody that you can. Um, let, here we go. Uh, give me a second that there's some sc funny screen sharing going on. Uh, let's see. Let me hear you. Okay, I think it's working now. Okay, very good. Uh, so, okay, let me remind everybody that we can uh, you we can you can ask questions via the Q and A on uh, Google Plus and via uh, Twitter. So we already have uh, one question, which is by Roberto Lineros, but I guess that he can make it uh, directly uh, through um, our audio system. So here you go, Lorenz, uh, Roberto. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Joel. And thank you to Lorenzo, because it was very interesting, the, the talk. And I have two doubts. One is, because you, you, you mostly in your study, you you constrain this lambda UDS or UDB button. Yeah. And my question is, if it is possible to go to access to higher uh, other generation, like who, I mean, with charms or I mean lower mass, but with in higher yeah, generation. It's, uh, it's a good question. Let me share the screen again. I should have a, a backup slide. You can see it? OK, so for instance, oh, sorry. <laughs> Here we have another possible electroweak contribution, uh, so which involves a loop of uh, third generation quark and squark. So top, stops, bottom, and bottom. So in this case, um, the coupling that you can probe if uh, I mean, with an NMBAR experiment, and uh, and the setup like this is uh, of this one. I don't know if you can see it, but it is uh, basically three one three. So um, yeah, it involves the third generation. While typically uh, diagrams with that for the second generation, so in, in, here instead you you put the charm. 
since you need some uh, basically some uh, chirality flip, uh, so you need mass insertions. Uh, this would be very much suppressed by the charm mass, of course, compared to the top mass, so it's not going to give a, a visible effect. But in principle, yeah, even though most of these, these are the, basically the models we study, most of them uh, are basically sensitive to the two couplings that uh, I've shown. Uh, there is this further contribution which involves a different uh, combination of coupling and a di different entry of this uh, lambda double prime tensor. Yeah. Mm, thank you. Um, and, and, and another doubt that, I mean, but this is more like transversal. Do you know, do you know or is it possible to, for instance, this experiment of double beta decay, the detector, can be sensitive to such low signatures? I mean, because this is a rare process. I mean, if you have neutron and anti neutron oscillation. Yeah, but I mean, in, in the, well, in this experimental setup, basically you have an, a neutron, uh, a neutron beam. So, uh, so you let the, the neutrons fly, uh, and then you observe, you, 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 you observe is some of the neutrons actually convert and into antineutrons. Um, so in this case, you have no, no nuclei involved. Um, a super kamiokande, I have no idea. Actually. But I mean, you know, there you have basically just oxygen. So uh, I, I don't think you can do uh, double beta decay with uh, oxygen nuclei. No, no, but I mean, I was referring that if the this kind of rare processes may play a role or may be detected in, in, in double beta decay experiment. I mean, because either the double beta decay and either the, these effects are, I mean, either the neutron anti neutron oscillation are so rare. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, have a, I mean, but, but I'm, you know, I mean, <clears throat> If I don't think you can do better than a super kamiokande, which has a, a huge amount of material and observed for many years, so they had a lot of bound neutrons compared to the, of course, to the size of a, of a double beta decay experiment. Ah, yeah, I see. I mean, they set already constraints at the level of 10 to the 32 years. On the yeah, I guess it is. on the oscillation in a, in a, in the in a, in the in the oxygen neutron. So uh, yeah, I think it's yeah. I think because of the mass of the kamiokande, super kamiokande, it's almost impossible to for the experiment to compete. I mean, at the level yeah. of having something similar. I, I wonder about um, ice cube, but that might be there might be a problem of the energy threshold. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe they are not sensitive to, to. I mean, yeah, th this process would be too low energy probably for the, for, yeah. uh, for for ice cube. But I mean, if not, you know, they are uh, even more uh, uh, oxygen than than super kamiokande in principle. Yeah, they will have to install different uh, apparatus in under the ice to blow the threshold to see that. Maybe. I guess. Maybe if there is someone from high school to listen, maybe you can have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you for, I mean, for my question, I guess that's our all. Thanks to you. Let's see, let's see if there are any other questions. Okay, there's none left on the Q&A, but I, I, have, I have a couple of questions myself. Um, Please. So, so one of them is um, when you present your uh, your initial slides, you present the initial Hamiltonian, right? Mm -hmm. For, for uh, oscillations, you, you don't include an absorb absorptive uh, term. So, so why is this? So the decay, you mean? I mean. Yeah, yeah, the, the width. Yeah, exactly. Ah, because basically on the time scale of these experiments, our neutrons are. Uh, to large extent uh, stable. If you think oh, about it, the neutron, the free neutron lifetime is about 15 minutes. So oh, I don't know okay. how fast they are, but of course they 
yeah, they travel is. this 100 meter pipe in uh, yeah much less time than uh, than 15 minutes for Tonkin. But okay. it's true. I mean, in principle, I, I should take I, I should take into account uh, yeah the imaginary part here and and mm -hmm. add the width. Yeah. Uh, but of course, for this kind of process, uh, I mean, and this experimental setup uh, is irrelevant. Right, and in principle, you could also have CP violation, right, on the delta ends. Uh, I guess, yeah. Mm. Now, the the, uh, yeah. the other, yeah, the, the other the other question was uh, you've been using the uh, right right insertions, so right. Um, is this due to the to the operator that you're using, or uh, is it possible also to to impose uh, left right operators or left left operators, or a mixture of left left and right right? Yes, yes. Good point. I mean, here, I mean, it's the simplest thing we could do with just with right hand. I mean, generating a fully right-handed operator. Yeah, and of course, as you were mentioning, then you have to assume a source of flavor violation in the right-handed squirk sector. Um, which is beyond the minimal flavor violation, as we know. Um, but in principle, you can do uh, something different. So you see, this is the full basis of the SU2 invariant operator. Yes. So you can have also processes that involve left-handed uh, cork doublets. And in our context, here. Uh, these two uh, professors in 86 uh, basically draw this diagram. Let me zoom for you. In this case, you have uh, uh, the flavor violation in the right. left between uh, among left-handed uh, uh, spermians, le left-handed uh, squarks, uh, and you need a left-right chirality flip. So it's a kind of different contribution also because, I mean, different supersymmetric parameters are involved. And, and you see, you end up with a, a different operator, so involving two left-handed down quarks. But because if you look at the results, OK, they're kind of different from the LAC side, but mostly because of my choice of the parameters here. But I mean, as you can see, I mean, qualitative, we, we, we can get to the same conclusions. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's that's more or less what I what I so 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 the, the orange region, what what is the orange region then? Uh this one you mean? It then uh, the dark orange. Ah is yeah this a... one is uh, is uh, from flavor changing neutral currents. In yeah. this case the most stringent process turns out to be B to D gamma. So from B to D gamma, you can give a pretty strong constraint here. Well, also because here yeah. I was yeah. taking <laughs> a, a quite large value for this uh, 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 flavor violating parameter above the minimal flavor violating prediction, by the way. So anyway, you, you need some uh, substantial flavor violation to for these processes to give rise to an n bar oscillation at the observable value. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, the, the the flavor constraints is strong, but it's not yeah, as yeah. not as much as the the, the uh, NM bar constraint. Mm -hmm. Cool. I don't know if anybody else in the audience has got a question. Yeah, I have one that is very naive, I guess. The for instance, in in this model, the one that we analyzed, you didn't. Consider or you didn't add because it's not mostly relevant, I guess, the, the gravitino uh, setup. In the sense that usually in models with air parity violation, you can have that your gravitino, the gravitino can take the role of the dark matter. So uh, my no, question was yeah. because it's the mass Planck suppressed, the decay width, and it's, no, it's, a, it's a good point actually because, I mean, you know, I mean, we didn't consider the gravitino mainly because our philosophy of just defining simplified models with just the ingredients we need for N and bar alone. But we have to say that for sure the gravitino cannot be lighter than 1 GV in this setup. Because if not, then the proton 
k to gravity. So you have proton decay. Because in this case, uh, <laughs> you don't need uh, to, to violate lepton number anymore. So this uh, kind of baryon number violating uh, uh, coupling that uh, I was employing, uh, if, you have, if you want, if you have a fermion lighter than the proton, then it's enough to give you fast proton decay. So the model is completely excluded, or at least it's excluded, uh, I mean, any possible large effect in any bar uh, oscillation is, of course, excluded. So any fermion lighter than the proton cannot be there, so also axinos or other kind of exotic uh, things. Um, so this means, for instance, that, yeah, uh, either you are not in gauge mediation or you have a very high mediation scale, so you, you, you need a relatively heavy gravitino or, or like in gravity, mediation and gravitino or at the, uh, with, with the mass of the same order of the other supersymmetry part. It's for sure not a light one. Uh, so I don't think you can have a, it can be long-lived, I don't think you can have a gravitino dark matter uh, in this case. So you should rather invoke a completely different sector, like an axion or something like that for, for dark matter. Yeah, that's, you know, one of the problems of this parity violation. It was lately got a bit mm, of a revival of interest because, of course, you can sum up some in certain setups, you can hide a little bit the, the, the supersymmetric particles from the LAC searches because you don't have missing energy. But on the other hand, you have a lot of jets, or, uh, or in case of leptonic parity violating violation, you have uh, a lot of leptons, so the bonds are kind of strong. Uh, but you lose anyway the your dark matter candidate. But we like axioms. So. <laughs> yes. No, very nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. So in principle, this kind of setup with uh, gravity dark matter is not is unlikely in this kind of. Uh, I, I didn't study it in, in detail, but I would say so. I don't think you can have a long-lived uh, gravity. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I think I think this is all. Um, we don't have any any further questions uh, that I've noticed. Let me check Twitter. Mm, no, nothing else on Twitter. Okay, so um, I hope you all enjoyed uh, this this webinar. Um, uh, well, before I finish, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel of the webinar if you want to watch the seminar again. And uh, well, eh, I hope to see you all on the next Latin American webinar on physics. Thank you again, Lorenzo. Uh, I guess that you can Thanks now go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we'll see you all eh, next time. So let me put. Good night. <laughs>